Sherlock, where she plays pathologist Molly Hooper. Uh, but she's about to star in a new series of another big BBC crown drama, Ripper Street. Please welcome to Saturday Kitchen, it's Louise Brearley. <laughs> Great to have you on the show. Fant fantastic to have you on the show. Now, this, this series, the, the, was, this is the third series of, of Ripper Street as well, but you can't access it at the moment on the BBC. It's coming later. No. So this is a new thing. So tell, tell us about how, yeah. you, how you get to watch it. Well, it, uh, the fans basically uh, did an online petition of Ripper Street and wanted to bring it back after the BBC let it go. And yeah. Amazon Prime Instant Video stepped into the breach and have now sort of made, made it. So you get to see it first on... Uh, Line, yeah, fact. but then the fans have said their thing, so now it's it's also back. You well, can, exactly. After you've accessed it online, yeah, you so can... you can watch it until Christmas. I think the last episode on Boxing Day. It's every Friday. It's released one episode, yeah, and then I think in the spring next year it comes out on the BBC. But it doesn't affect the way you film it, I suppose. It's just the same. It doesn't. It doesn't. I thought there'd be lots of sort of internet terminals everywhere. No, not, no not, none of that. None of that. Bit, not uh, but you're here to face some food. But now, of course, at the end of today's programme, I'll either cook food heaven or food hell for Louise. It's up to our studio guests and some of our viewers to decide which one you'll be eating. Uh, food heaven, what would it be? And I cooked this last week as well. So. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, I like slow cooked lamb. Anything, anything lamby. Sounds pretty good as well. And what about the dreaded food hell? Well, I'm a weirdo because I can eat corn on the cob if it's been grilled or barbecued, but when you take it off and put it in a tin, it's just rank. I can't bear it. <laughs> yes. It's just horrid. It smells bad and it's just... And weird. there's also mussels that you don't like. Mussels. Also, I have a love-hate relationship and I want to love them because I know that they ought to be good, but they're, they're a bit... No, a bit like something you might have coughed on. Right, <laughs> nice, thank morning. you. Yeah, really glamming up my recipe. <laughs> uh, so it's either lamb shanks or mussels for food. <clears throat> uh, heaven, I'm going to look to North Africa for my inspiration for this one and make a classic tagine. I'm going to use the lamb shanks and they're cooked slowly alongside with some onions, garlic, apricots, sultanas, tomatoes, loads of Moroccan spices, some honey in there as well. And it's served with some preserved lemons, those are salted lemons, and a little bulgur wheat tablet to go with it. How does that sound? That sounds amazing. Oh, Louise could be facing food hell. Those mussels, the mussels are opened, added to some shallots. Sweet corn is in there as well. Add some white wine, some chicken stock, a few herbs, and it's blended and served with a sliced bit of focaccia and some fresh tomato over the top. The mussels are on the top of that as well. Uh, but you have to wait to the end of the show to find out which one she's going to get. Now, if you'd like to ask a question for any of our brilliant chefs today, then you can do that by calling this number. That's 033 or 123 That's 033 or 123 And a few of you will be able to put your questions to us live a little later on. And don't forget, if I do get to speak to you, they may ask you whether you want Louise to face food heaven or food hell. I reckon it's going to be lamb, though. It's pretty good. Four hours of cooking, it's going to be pretty good. Right, are you hungry? Mm. Because I am, because this is an amazing recipe. This. Let's cook it this morning. So, <laughs> curry and naan bread, you see. There'll be a lot of people waking up this morning with a hangover, <laughs> trust me, waiting for, to dive into that. But it's all for me. It's all for you? Yeah, uh, yeah dive in, tell us what you think. But, you know, like you say, you can make that sauce, you can make, certainly make the base in advance, couldn't you, really? You can make the sauce in advance or yeah. watch this space. Right. You'll be able to buy them. Uh, shortly. All right. <laughs> what do you reckon? Okay, please do the name. Happy with oh, that? That's incredible. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, leave the rest for me. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we need some wine to go with this. Our wine expert, Ollie Smith, has been to Essex this week. So what did he choose to go with Vivek's brilliant buttered chicken? So, first of all, congratulations on a career that, that you always wanted to do, but since leaving sort of university, you went off and did journalism, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. why, was, why was that? It wasn't a long gap, but why was the gap for you? Why didn't you go straight into act, acting? Well, because I was frightened. I was too shy. Oh yeah, I, felt, I just was a bit timid and at Cambridge um, everyone who was doing acting at that time was wildly intimidating. But why is that? Because acting always seems to be, do you, do you see it as a release? I mean, what, what, what is it, you know? I think, yeah, I do, I do. I think like, it, there's, I mean, it's a cliche, it's so common that a lot of actors are um, a bit shy to start with and then show off on stage and it all marvellous. Because, I mean, the stage is pretty, uh, you know, dormanted place as well, but that's where you kind of fell in love earlier on in your career, because you did so many things in the theatre. Still doing it, for instance. Yeah. You just finished, what, in Glasgow as well? Y yeah, I was doing Miss Julie up in Glasgow, which was amazing. So, um, in fact, I borrowed the dress off the theatre to, to go to an awards the other night, because right. it was a really nice <laughs> Do they know or not? Yeah, I had to ask them if oh, they would okay. put it in the post. They put it in a jiffy bag, and it came... Um, I don't expect that's very glamorous, but it was a nice frock. Now, tell us about Ripper Street and Sherlock, because that must have been a great phone call to get, I mean, both of those gigs as well, but 
Yeah, Sher Sherlock's was, was it really interesting because it was quite a little part on the on the page, and I just wanted to be a part of it because it, you know, because it's Sherlock, and uh, the script was so brilliant. But then um, they decided they really liked Molly, my character. Yeah. Her sort of rabbity sweetness seemed to chime with them, so they wrote more for her, and yeah. Now, are you, are you in the next series, or do you know yet? Have you seen the script? Is, I hope so. Can you tell us anything about it? Or not? I, is it, I haven't I'm, I'm seen sure the script. I'm sure it's coming back. <laughs> it is coming back. We're doing a special in January, um, which I know nothing about. I was with them all last night at the, at the Crime Thriller Awards, and yeah. um, they, were, they didn't tell me. So they, they don't tell writing. you anything? No, they're writing. It's all very closely gone. I do know stuff, but I'm not allowed to say. Because it was the big storyline for you, wasn't it, as well? The one that you've just recently done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the first episode, uh, I was the lucky recipient of a, of a Benedict Cumberbatch snog, and that was very exciting for Molly's fans. <laughs> well, Benedict's fans. And then tell, tell me about Ripper Street, then, because, yes. you know, it, it's sort oh, of, yeah. after series two... It kind of went away, now it's back again, but yeah. slightly different guys in terms of how you get to watch it, first of all. Yes, that's right. You, you get to watch it online first, on Amazon Prime Instant Video. They're releasing it one a week, I think, until Christmas from November the 14th. So this um, is, you can stream it online, is that...? Yeah. Stream it, that's the word. Well... I'm, I'm a, an idiot when it comes to streaming, but yes. That's that me. I've just, you know, Twitter's new on me still, but anyway. <laughs> but you, you can, oh, for all the fa the fans basically brought it back. They did, that... yeah. There was an online petition, um, and I think 40,000 of them said, please don't um, take it away from us. So, uh, yeah, so Amazon did the right thing. Because they, well, they, they got it, and then it's, and it's almost come come back to the BBC as well. So yeah, after, it, the, after people have seen it, they can... That's right. Well, tell us about it, but... That's right. No, yeah, they can see it. I think if you don't possess Amazon thingy, you can watch it in the spring yeah. on, uh, on BBC. But yeah. that's the power that the fans have as well, you know, which it is... It is, and apparently that's happening more and more. I, as I say, know nothing about this world, but yeah, apparently that... Those streaming people acting as studios is common. Now, for people who haven't seen it, tell us tell us about the storyline, really. Uh, mainly aimed at that chap over there, sat at that table, who has never watched it. <laughs> Which? So, <laughs> what, Ripper? Rebecca over there, so... Ripper Street? Yes. Yeah, Ripper Street is uh, set just after... Well, the first series, I think, was set just after Jack the Ripper did his, his deeds in uh, Whitechapel in London. Um, but I, I saw it, t when I was off of it, I watched it, I didn't see it at the time. Yeah. And um, I thought it was really great in so far as some period dramas that you, you see, you can almost, when, you're, when you first start watching a scene, you can almost hear the, um, the third assistant cueing the, the extras just before. You, sort of, you know what I mean, you can see it, it's like cue the horse, cue the, the kid with the hoop. And, and Ripper Street's just not like that. The world that, that they create is so sort of messy. Quiet. I'm trying to do this quietly, I can't do it quietly. <laughs> the director's going, can you try and do that quietly? I'm just going to do shall this. I, yeah. Shall I shout? I'll, I'll just do this. Anyway, on River Street. <laughs> see, see, how am I supposed to do that quietly, you see? Anyway, you can blend this, it's quite easy to do. These are all the shells, I'll be back to you in a minute. Right. All right. Right. I'll just mouth the and words. silence. Right now, pass that through a sieve. That's your sauce done. I'll pass wow. that through a sieve. That's the sauce done for that one. Anyway, go on. Tell us about it. Yeah, no. I was just saying that uh, oftentimes when you watch those uh, period things, you can sort of see the cogs. But I don't know. They they shoot on two little funny streets in an old barracks in Dublin, and they dress and redress it amazingly. And um, it's uh, and they have just the most incredible sporting artists, all of whom look suitably Victorian. I don't know, it, it, they created a real world, I think, something like, it's a bit like Deadwood or something, where it really feels like it's alive rather than being cued. Because a lot of them are going, a lot of, a lot of TV shows, the, the dramas are going back into that sort of, that era, you know. And it's an amazing lighting and stuff like that. Yeah, it's great. You know. I, I, I just, it is nice being in a corset as well. It, gives, it made me very doughty. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 it, it, it sort of made me very broad-shouldered, weirdly, as if I was wearing sidewood pads. So but that was good, so I'm, play, I'm playing a doctor, right. so I needed to look very reliable, and um, she's from the north, the northern lands, Sheffield, specifically. 
Right, I'm just going to recap what I've done, really. Um, <laughs> Please Because I've forgotten, to be honest, more than anything else. Um, but I've got, I've got loads of things going on here. Uh, I've got my ravioli on there, which is made out of a salmon mousse. Uh, mousse. I've got the Dublin Bay prawns in. The wreck fish has just been turned over like that. We're just going to finish that off with a... Sorry, the uh, grey mullet just turned over. A little bit of lemon over the top. A little bit of lemon in here. That's got the beans and the, uh, these lovely Dublin Bay prawns in there as well. I've got some asparagus. The sauce, I'm just going to finish off with a few numbers of butter in there as well. A little bit of salt. Careful on the pepper, because I know Helena's got some <laughs> quite unusual pepper to bring with us as well. But all you then do is just basically plate this up. So you've got the warm bit of longestine like that. And then the lovely grey mullet to go with it as well. And then, of course, you've got the ravioli, which I'll just switch off. We'll just leave these out. And this is your nice... Salmon and longestine ravioli. It doesn't get served like that. I'm going to plate it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then all you do is just, just pop it on the plate. So, theatre, you've just finished in Glasgow. Is there any uh, rumours you're going to bring it down to London, I hear, as well? Or? Well, we're hoping to. It's all very embryonic at the moment, but that would be terrific. Because we this didn't is... run for very long. We were only on for a couple of weeks, so I don't quite feel like... This is Miss Julie, it's called, is that yeah, it? Yeah, that's Str Strindberg's Miss Julie. Okay. So, we'll anyway, we've got these wonderful... Dublin Bay prawns or longestines, and then you grab some of your wreck fish like that, a bit of your ravioli, sits like that. So your grey mullet, I keep calling it wreck fish, but it's grey mullet. <laughs> but, and then you've got this sauce, this is all made out of the shells as well, wow. which is just blended. But that's is that it. what made the noise? Unfortunately, that's what <laughs> was making the noise, yeah. It's not very glamorous, but it's, it sure does taste wonderful. And then a little bit of chervil over the top. Wow. And then some of this green stuff that we found in the bottom of the fridge this morning. <laughs> um, but just, yeah, little red vein sorrel. There you have it. Thanks very much. I didn't think I was going to do that in eight <laughs> minutes, but dive into that, tell us what you think. But taste the fish, it's just amazing. And, and really, I think, you know, you use a lot in Indian cooking as well, yes, don't you? Yes, do. Great. But it is just fantastic. It handles spice very well, too. And, you know, it just it pan fries beautifully like you, you've just done. But it's also nice it's and firm. Good. A bit like mm. bass, but a lot less money. Happy with that? Mm. There you go. It's mm. worth the noise, you see. <laughs> uh, right, so what we'll be cooking for Louise at the end of the show. Can we face some food heaven? Lamb shanks and a classic lamb shank tagine. The shanks are cooked uh, for a long time with apricot sultanas, onions, tomatoes, with lots of Moroccan spices, and it's served with preserved lemon and a bulgur wheat tabouleh. Or she could be facing food hell. Mussels and a sweet corn and mussel soup. The mussels are open, blended with some white wine, shallots, chicken stock, and sweet corn. And the fish soup is finished with, uh, sorry, the soup is finished with double cream and served with sliced focaccia and a fresh tomato, a little salad on the top. Some of our viewers in the chefs in the studio get to side Louise's fate today, but you have to wait to the end of the show to see the final result. Right, now it's